The airline industry had a turbulent year. The International Air Transport Association, IATA, representing some 290 airlines, predicted that the industry profits would rise to $35.5 billion in 2019 from $32.3 billion in 2018. But the final estimate was only $25.9 billion. What's going on? Airline Crisis – Why Aviation Industry Experiences Decline Airlines struggled to keep their margins at desired levels, and many factors contributed to the crisis – infrastructural, social, political, and economic ones. Let's talk about the key factors and start with rising oil prices. Fuel is an essential part of spending for any carrier. This chart shows how airline net profits and fuel costs correlate. In many cases, the more expensive the fuel is, the less an airline earns. In 2019, airlines spent almost 24% of operating expenses on fuel, or $188 billion, with an average price of $65 per barrel of Brent crude. That's 4.7% more than a year before. U.S.-China Trade War the trade dispute between the U.S. and China started in 2018 with the U.S. setting tariffs and trade restrictions on imported Chinese goods. China fired back with similar measures. International trade weakened. The size of the air cargo fell by 5% compared to 2018. This was the worst performance since the global financial crisis. Demand for air freight in July 2019 was 3.2% less compared to the same time a year before. This means that more aircraft aren't fully loaded, so freight capacity rose by 2.9% as measured in November. But the situation differs across regions. For example, Asia-Pacific Airlines faced air cargo decline of 3.7%. North American freight carriers fared better with a 1.1% decline. And European airlines saw growth of 2.6% compared to November 2018. The Grounding of the Boeing 737 MAX On October 29, 2018, and again on March 10, 2019, two Boeing 737 MAX jets, one owned by Indonesian carrier Lion Air and the other by Ethiopian Airlines, crashed, killing a total of 346 people. These two events were the largest factors of the ongoing crisis. So, let's discuss them in more detail. The Federal Aviation Administration FAA, and other regulators decided to ground the MAX for additional inspection. The 737 MAX had been making nearly 8,600 flights in a regular week of travel. In April 2019, Boeing admitted that the MCAS anti-stall flight system played a role in two catastrophes. The lack of crew training was another reason. Until January 2020, the manufacturer noted that simulator training was not needed. That was the main selling point of MAX since it helped airlines save money. The U.S. pilots, for instance, took a 56-minute training course on iPads to learn about the differences between MAX and older 737 planes. The training did not have info about MCAS. The plane makers attempting to climb out of the crisis. Boeing has been updating the MCAS software, doing test flights with it, developing training programs, hosting conferences, and preparing presentations for airlines on how to communicate with nervous passengers. It has also established a $100 million relief fund for the victims' families and appointed a new CEO. But these actions still weren't enough for regulators to allow the airliner to fly again. Until January 2020, Boeing kept producing MAX aircraft for its clients. Airlines were also waiting on the ordered jets that kept piling up on Boeing parking lots. In January, Boeing suspended production, as it's still unclear when its massive grounding will end. Boeing estimated that the plane grounding would cost over $9 billion. In particular, $5 billion were allocated to compensate the airlines. Airlines are also suffering from max grounding. 68 carriers with a craft in their fleet or waiting for delivery are in limbo. For now, carriers rebook flights, estimate losses due to cancellations, and revise budgets. American Airlines, with 24 MAX 8s at the time of the grounding, noted in October 2019 that it lost about $700 million in revenue because of 30,000 flight cancellations. Southwest Airlines said its operating profit fell by $435 million through September 30, 2019, and expects the loss to increase. It had 34 MAX 8s in its fleet at the time of the aircraft ban and planned to add 41 more by the end of 2019. 
Ryanair planned to buy 58 aircraft for the summer season 2020, but now plans to order only 10 because it cut its summer capacity expansion plan from 7% to 3%. In respect to those changes, the carrier expects to serve 6 million fewer passengers during the 2020-21 financial year. Anyway, the number of planes may increase or decrease depending on when the 737 MAX is back in service. Ryanair ordered jets with a large number of seats. It wouldn't be a lower cost carrier without that. So certification could take another two months after the MAX is allowed to fly again. Also, the European Union Aviation Safety Agency that checks the plane independently from the FAA delayed testing, so the airline won't get jets in time for the summer season. Ryanair says the grounding costs more than $110.22 million a year, with only 54 plane orders in 2019 versus Airbus's 768 ordered. Boeing is no longer the market leader. It has been losing nearly $1 billion a month flying less while thinking about the environment. Hellish scenes from current brush fires in Australia, the 2018 wildfire season in California, Amazon rainforest fires in 2019, recent floods in Venice. These are some of the events that help to fuel climate debates worldwide. Awareness on climate affects the aviation industry. More and more travelers start thinking about the industry's carbon footprint and change their flying habits. Swiss Bank UBS surveyed 6,000 people in the US, France, the UK, and Germany and discovered that 21% of respondents took fewer flights during 2019. The flight shaming movement is one of the factors why 2 million fewer people passed through Swedish airports in 2019. Domestic travel in Sweden, where Fliegskam or flight shame originated, fell by 9%, while the total overall traffic decreased by 4%. This may not have such an immediate impact now, but the trend isn't going anywhere soon. Aviation makes only 2% of all human-made CO2 emissions and 12% of all means of transportation. Road transport is responsible for 74% of all transportation emissions. But there are reasons for a more positive outlook for 2020. IATA predicts that a slight increase in economic growth and stable fuel prices will help the industry revenue passenger kilometers growth remain close to current levels at 4.1%. Revenue passenger kilometers is the number of kilometers traveled by paying passengers. Oil prices are forecasted to be about $63 per barrel of Brent compared to $65 in 2019. The cargo business is expected to grow at 2% after it fell by 3.3% in 2019. The U.S. and China signed the Phase 1 deal on January 15th. Experts note the agreement is a much-needed truce for the two opponents and the rest of the world economies. The airline industry is expected to outperform its 2019 earnings and generate $29.3 billion of net profit. So, let's hope we see the industry rehabilitated in 2020.